Reuters reported, the picture that emerges is one of leaky pipes, vermin, toxic mold, non-functioning appliances, and months-long waits for repairs. Private equity firm Blackstone Group is now the country's number one landlord, meaning they own more rental properties than any other institutional investor or mom and pop landlord in the country. In fact, if you think mom and pop landlords would even have a shot at beating Blackstone Group, uh, you would be mistaken. Because Blackstone Group has acquired quite a bit of real estate, both single family homes and apartment buildings. And their whole play here is to focus their energy on low income neighborhoods and moderately uh, priced real estate. Essentially take these single family homes and these rental units, maybe do some renovations, shoddy renovations to be sure, and then jack up rent and evict people, by the way, with no problem at all if they're unwilling or unable to pay the insanely high rental prices or pay some of the needless fees that are associated with corporate landlords like Blackstone. Now, recently there was a report done on how Blackstone and its real estate ventures have impacted San Diego specifically. And uh, the report was done by two organizations, the Private Equity Stakeholder Project and the Alliance of Californians for Community Empowerment. This is very ironic because this is Anna using a Republican strategy, creating a problem or being part of a problem and then reporting on the effects of your own actions as if you're just simply an observer. Progressives like Anna are ironically a big asset for companies like Blackstone. She's talking about a lot of things that are downstream of some of the carnage that some of the progressive policies that she advocates for leads to. She talks about them buying these homes. She doesn't really talk about how they buy the homes in the first place, right? Let's discuss how they get the homes in the first place and how Anna helps them. So Anna pushes this rhetoric that helps to enforce the class warfare, put the middle class against the poor. Everything is about the poor, the poor, we got to keep them off the streets. Everyone should have a home, right? Look at these wealthy elites, right? Not referring to the 1%. She's talking about the 10%, the 5%, right? Middle class, upper middle class people who have enough money to be buying up multiple homes and buying a multifamily and then trying to charge people for rent, right? These evil landlords, right? While people are trying to just keep their head above water, these people are buying up multiple homes and they're just a bunch of assholes, right? So she advocates for policies that do things like stop landlords from being able to evict, right? Which opens the door for people to basically take over other people's homes. You move into their home, you just decide you're not going to pay the rent and the landlord can't do anything about it. And of course, Anna's not talking about this, right? She doesn't talk about the aftermath of the stuff she pushes for, right? She just wants to talk about, oh, we got to keep people, keep people off the streets, right? And then if they, they're able to uh, stop a thousand evictions, we stopped a thousand evictions. That's great news, right? What happens to the homeowners who are just regular people? They're not one percenters. So they, they can't afford to pay their mortgages if they're not get, getting paid rent. Right? They can't afford a fancy uh, attorneys like BlackRock can, right? It took me three months just to find an attorney that even knew the basic laws. That's what we regular people have to deal with. You can't even find legal representation that will actually do their jobs. So your attorney won't help you. The city won't help you. And people like Anna has the community against you because you have progressives listening to her, giving them half the story. Getting them caught up in this fantasy of just, oh, let's just focus on the poor and abandon the middle class. Not realizing that in the end, all you're doing is helping the 1%, right? You create a bunch of properties that become distressed. So a bunch of small landlords end up being foreclosed on. And then the banks take the properties. And if you think that small landlords were an issue, what do you think is going to happen when BlackRock is a landlord? Well, you know this is what this whole video is about, right? 
This video is about how evil BlackRock is. Well, if BlackRock is so evil, why are you helping supply them with homes by preventing landlords from being able to have any power at all in their own homes? Imagine you saved up money for decades to buy your own home, you buy a multifamily home, and you have someone come in the home and able to live for free, being a nuisance to other tenants, to the neighborhood, committing crimes, right? Keeping trash all over the place. And the homeowner is powerless to do anything, thanks to people like Anna, right? Because it's just one track thinking. We, we're just like with the, with the guns, right? You can't have any conversation about guns. It's just, you know, with the Second Amendment, Second Amendment, the Second Amendment. We, we, we're supposed to have guns. Guns is our rights. Thousand kids slaughtered. Go, Second Amendment, Second Amendment, Second Amendment. Right? You have small landlords losing their homes. Oh, housing should be a right. Everyone should have a home. They, they, they can't be on the street. They can't be on the street. But look, you're causing foreclosures. And then if you have a bunch of foreclosures, what does that do to the price of the homes? So even for the people who are poor enough for you to care about, who only have a little tiny one family home, they put all their money in one family home. How much is that home going to be worth when homes around it are being foreclosed on? That's going to bring the prices down. So you got a regular family that somehow managed to buy a little single family home. And then when they needed to sell it, they sell it at a loss. And then you got the little small landlords who lose their homes, get foreclosed on. And then these corporate landlords come in off the back end and they scoop them up. And then you're going to cry about how they're slumlords. If you don't want the corporate landlords, then stop abandoning the small landlords. Support the poor. Support the middle class. Right? Don't just support the people at the... Support people all the way up to middle class. All the people who have to work for a living need to be supported. We're in this together. It's not... Tenant versus landlord, landlord versus tenant. It's not poor versus middle class, middle class versus poor. It is we, the 99% against the 1%. People like Anna keep us divided and get to make money from monetizing destruction that they have their hands in. Ooh, the corporate landlords. Yes, thanks to you, Anna. I'm not going to put all the blame on you, but you are part of the problem. This is the Baby Channel on the Baby Comment section below. Click on the like button, subscribe, smash that button.